Hello. Uh, welcome to the next piano lesson with Richard Yang. Uh, today it's a, a very small wish. Monstrous Monstro from the Kingdom Hearts uh, Field and Battle album. Uh, you can, uh, to follow this uh, piano lesson, uh, you will need a sheet music which you can find on Google fairly easily. Just search for the Kingdom Hearts Piano Collections. Uh, this is a Field and Battle uh, album. And uh, this piece is, uh, to me, this was the most difficult piece in this album. Uh, well, not as difficult as in uh, the section at the, uh, the later half with a lot of jumps. That's, uh, to me, uh, for me anyway, it's almost impossible to, be, to play perfectly no matter how I try. Uh, but uh, with my help, hopefully you can, I can get you to the ballpark, uh, right? You, you can try to attack this. So from the beginning, um, it's, it should be fairly simple. Uh, so as with all of my tutorial videos, I will play the notes very, very slowly so that you can uh, see the fingering and I will explain to you, uh, you know, what, uh, what kind of a phrasing do I do, anything special that you need to be careful of, okay? So in the beginning, I'll play that slowly first on the notes. That's uh, the beginning section. So as you, as you can see, the notes should be fairly simple. The only thing you need to know is uh, how to uh, phrase this. So first of all, no pedal in the beginning, beginning okay? Uh, even the first note, even after the slur, you do this, right? You lift up your th thumb just a tiny little bit at the last moment before you hit the next note. That's how you get that staccato. Same thing. Here is where the first time that you're gonna put the pedal down. Up, no pedal. Pedal down a little bit to change the notes and up. Right? And I don't know if uh, you would have any problem playing with uh, this. Just keep your uh, uh, pinky on the on the note, and you can do staccato on the left side of the hand, right? That shouldn't be too too bad. And now, now here, I understand that you probably saw my fingering. I use this only because the next note is an F as well, and I'm not able to do this or even this. These are extremely awkward uh, fingering, so I just used my thumb for the both notes. Now, remember, you have because you have to you have to keep the pedal down here for so long across two measures. Things will be very muddy by the end, so I recommend on the final F you do a little half pedal to, to let most of the sound go. Half pedal here. You don't need to take it all off, but uh, well, now all off, and one more time. Let's do section A. So I'll play that slowly first. section A and uh, the interesting thing about this one I, I try to figure when I learned this piece I listened to the recording a lot just to figure out where they, where they put the pedal so here here is how it goes no pedal pedal down here up. pedal up. and here I do pedal down Change the, the your pedal every uh, every quarter note. Change, 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 change. Lift your hand one more time. No pedal here. You don't need pedal there. Okay. Now 
us to section B, a little slightly bigger now. section B so of course the notes are fairly similar it's not too difficult but however the most important part of uh, this section is where you breathe because if you simply play the music through uh, without any breathing that's gonna sound very tiring very soon so you want to give it a little life right so how, how do I do it All right in the beginning right All right you see a little crescendo here because you want to focus on this it's like a resolution here your right hand at the end of the slur you want to play it's not like a staccato but you want to lift your hand before you start the new phrase because for, let me show you what I what I mean no phrasing like it's like this Right, so right, so you want to give it a little character here. I'm gonna exaggerate everything just so that I can deliver the idea. Up, right hand and down, start a new phrase. So start starting a new beginning, louder. See, you see, at the end of the slur, I almost I play it almost like a staccato, but not, you know when you actually play it, it's not a staccato, but that's how you think. With this, uh, you know, uh, with you have, when you have a triplet and a straight time notes together, well, how do you play this? Just do this. You see that, right? Essentially, you are looking at where the uh, notes really land. Uh, right. So you only play that faster. It should sound fairly natural. And at, of course, here you have the end of the slur on the right hand and you have a rest right after the, the, the left hand. So you want to take everything off and start a new beginning. And then, and then start this. No pedal at all. Now section C, uh, you're gonna use a little uh, middle pedal here. Let me show you Because on the right hand We have a staccato here But we also need to hold the left uh, the C on the left hand and how do you do that? Right about here. I press down the middle uh, pedal to hold a note so I can do the rest Here after you play the C hold the middle pedal or actually after you play the B flat because you don't want other notes to be held there that you don't want right same here after I get to the G press the middle pedal and the rest you want to change the pedal every quarter note of course 
So this is how you play this section. I know the explanation is not very clear. Uh, if you look at my original video in the des description below, it, it should uh, give you an, a better idea of when I pedal down on my middle pedal and, and whatnot. You can learn the, uh, uh, the pedaling over there. So I'm going to play the, the notes fairly slowly. Section D is the same thing as before, so I'm not going to spend time here. I will just play it over. Here, pedal down for the first time in this section. Now change every quarter note. Up. Down and up. And now pedal down here. Some sound go right now. This is uh, the next part. The forte. It's a well. It's a little louder, and you want to give a little emphasis emphasis on this section because it's a bigger right. ready left pedal now you can uh, play the rest and just so that you know on the original recording uh, the the uh, the uh, the recording artist didn't use any middle pedal he just hold down the pedal all the way like this is really not how I like things to sound it's way too muddy so uh, I do this intermediate player up to this point you should be able to manage all of these now from the next section and on that's what I call extremely difficult uh, especially the next page this page is not too bad so I'm gonna play the notes very slowly for now for section G throughout and the most important part to remember is at the very last quarter note in, in almost uh, every uh, measure here make sure you get your pedal up because I listened to the very few recordings available on YouTube most of them held the pedals all the way down that just doesn't sound right so if you listen to, you know if I lift the pedal off the last quarter note this sounds like this right yeah, as you can see it sounds a lot more exciting and, and, and playful right so that's what what you want to do so again I, I don't think I played that slow enough so I'll play that one more time okay uh, soft
you got the fingering and now I'm going to talk about the, the uh, what's so hard about this. Obviously the left hand, right? If you go to the uh, first line, last measure, uh, second last measure. Right? When you play at full speed. And then you can jump back up. So you definitely want to practice your left hand and right hand separately uh, until you, especially the left hand, until you are very comfortable. And the right hand, because it's not so hard, right? So you want to be able to play the right hand without having to look at it so that you can focus on your side on the left hand so that you can know where to hit. Right? And the, I don't know if the next thing I'm going to say, it will make any sense. This is the way I practice the jumps, okay? Uh, first of all, I can jump normally fairly good. However, um, you know, when we have on octaves, yes. But in this case, we have a lot of notes in between. So that changes the, the equation a little bit. So... <laughs> get to the end of the measure, you want to plan ahead. For example, by about here, you want to know that, you know, I'm, I'm gonna hit the C below, C below very soon. So when you prepare for the next note, you don't even want to have to have the processing power to figure out this. You just need to know. Otherwise, you wouldn't have time to focus on the note below. Or at, in fact, it's this. This, I have to plan two notes ahead of time. I need to know where I'm gonna jump to, okay? And now from the tr uh, double forte in that section, it's a little different because you got bigger chords. Right? That's a very, di uh, this is a very difficult jump to play at very high speed, right? So. Uh, the way I do it, obviously, you need to know the chords well. You want to be able to play this fairly fast. Right? And then you just you have to figure out the pattern, right? Because from here, just remember you have to jump back down more than an octave, in fact, a tenth. For the second uh, variation with the uh, B flat, the jump is to the same octaves. Right? And before you hit the B flat, I, I don't know if that makes sense. It's just a, a, a very small detail that you tell your own brain what's happening. Like when you play this, the jump is a tenth note below. The next jump. It's just something that you tell you you tell yourself and you believe it, right? Right hand. I I know it doesn't sound difficult, but when you play it at full speed, it, it is difficult, and you can get a little bit, very confused. you know you're only playing these notes across either this octave or that octave. That's the comforting part. So you have to practice such so so much such that you don't have to think about you can almost blindly no, I, I'm actually covering my eyes right now. But of course, that changes the distance between keys. I'm not accurate. But anyway, that's how you want to practice. Well, actually, this that's that's not the right right notes. All right, so even after I played this for for a whole week, I'm I'm still not getting this. So it's very difficult. Anyway, so from here. The key 
key changes, and this makes it even worse because when you have to jump onto a black key, you have a little more room, uh, more margin of error per se. Because when you if you know a little off, you are still there, but on a white key, you have less room for error. So that's why this section H will be very very difficult. So, but I'll play it anyway. Sorry, I forgot to lift the pedal. Right, so far, so good. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, too hard, but uh, you obviously. Uh, just follow the fingering and you should do okay. Now the next section. Uh, in Kingdom Hearts, we have a lot of uh, runs like this. Like naturally, you know, when we look at the uh, sheet music, or actually it's here, you would tend, tend to want to use two and one. But I don't recommend that. I recommend whenever you can use one and three. Uh, because one and three gives you much better tempo control because if uh, uh, you can actually lean on the thumb to, to count for example All right, so you can do that very fast while counting it right if you use one and two sometimes you can get confused on hey how many times have I played this do I play one one more set or one less fewer set? Uh, you get confused. So whenever you can, use one and three. So follow this. And of course, in the beginning, I will use one, uh, five, two, one first. Right after, I do three. Okay, watch this. play that through. Uh, hopefully you can try to follow up. Play it fairly slowly, not too fast. page here it is the most difficult part throughout enti the entire album okay it's so difficult uh, you have to do a lot of jumps on the white keys right so I'm gonna do from the double forte in the middle uh, the third measure on the first line one more time emphasis a uh, big accent there now that finally that takes us to the end so it looks like the uh, beginning section so I'm gonna play that sl slowly
two. That takes us to the end. Uh, so I hope uh, this is a quick tutorial for the uh, quick uh, lesson on this video uh, on this uh, mu uh, piece of music. It's uh, very difficult. Uh, however, as you can see, the difficulty is I find this to be a little unreasonably difficult uh, for what it needs to deliver because you know I get it. The melody is there. The uh, is you know is what's that? What what do they call it? Monstrous monstro, right? So it's monstrous. Uh, but a lot of the difficult parts, they are, you know, difficult without a uh, greater purpose. I, I think they just made it difficult for the sake of being difficult. Uh, but obviously, if you can play this at full speed, eventually this is going to sound very impressive. So I hope you enjoyed the, this uh, piano lesson video. And uh, the next one I'll do is Night of Fate. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.